Hi everyone, it's me Hatsley and I'm back with another speed build and this is going to be the interior of Hogwarts so if you haven't seen part one it will be in the description below and you can go and see it but this is going to be the interior a little bit of the exterior as well because I left some things out I actually spent about two hours just off screen just like not recording or anything just going over the inside and just making sure the floor plan actually worked and I had the right rooms that I wanted everywhere and also I found a really really good picture of Hogwarts after I built the exterior so I wish I found it before because then I would have known clearly that the greenhouses are actually shown at the front or at least near to the front of Hogwarts so I thought that I would do a little bit of rearranging so that's what I'm doing right now and I think when I first started to do this, personally, I think it looks shocking. I think it looks really, really bad. And when I actually went back to it, I think maybe about, I guess like an hour and a half into the build, that's when I started to become quite happy with it because I changed this conservatory from looking really modern and just really out of place to looking a little bit more traditional and I think more fitting to what I would imagine the greenhouses to be like. So we do end up with three and I'm excited to be able to share it like when we get to that part because I was pretty happy with the greenhouses. The greenhouses are probably one of my favourite parts of the build just because I feel like they just look really exotic. I don't even know if that's the right word but I just like them. So I thought it'd be really cool to just add them in and I feel like it gave a lot to the build. So I was definitely happy with that. And I also had a lot of fun with Hogwarts. I've been sharing like loads and loads of pictures of my progress in building it just because I was getting so many questions on YouTube. Like I was getting questions asking where part two of Hogwarts is on other videos. And it just got to the point where I was like, okay, I just need to post some just updates on Twitter and stuff. But yeah, I mean, if there is a video that you're wondering about, like why I haven't shared it, the chances are that I probably haven't forgotten about it. It's probably just that I've been working really hard on it, like Hogwarts. Anyway, I added a clock tower because I actually forgot about the clock tower in the first place. I can't remember if anyone mentioned it in the comments, but I decided to add it just at the back so we have a little bit more room there. Also, something that was really, really nice to see is on the last video that I did, I noticed a few people that don't play The Sims um, came to the video and I find that amazing. If it's a game that I'm not interested in and I'm just sort of like out the blue going there, I just, I found that really nice. So thank you. Like if you don't play The Sims and if you're just coming to see Hogwarts, that's so, so cool. I will just explain that with The Sims 4 building, it's really restricted. So there's a lot of stuff that I couldn't do. For instance, I couldn't put in multiple floors, like anywhere above the fourth floor. I just couldn't do it because we don't have that uh, technology in The Sims 4, unfortunately, and stuff like that. I mean, other things as well, like we don't have every single object and there's a restriction on the land capacity as well like it's only a 64 by 64 I would have loved a bigger plot and I think that in the future if we ever get a hundred by hundred plots or even bigger than that I'm hoping that we will to be fair because it would make sense if we had maybe really, really big buildings like apartments or something that's one of the rumors that's coming out at the moment actually the fact that we're going to be getting like a city life um expansion of course I don't know if it's true I love rumours about The Sims 4 just because it really interests me and it's something that plays a massive part in my channel. So yeah, I think it'd be pretty cool if we did. And maybe when that happens, then I could put it on a bigger plot, include more things. But for now, I thought it's okay. Like it's scaled down. I had to make do with what we had. And there we go. Anyway, I did get a lot of requests in the last part to make sure that we could get the Quidditch rings. And that was a really popular suggestion from a lot of people. So. I just felt like from getting that popular suggestion, I wanted to make it more of a visual thing than a playable thing. Now, of course, it is going to be playable, but it does have a lot of moving objects. So if you did want to just play this as a normal house, move a family in, or use the get to school mod, because that could be pretty cool. And also, I have noticed that loads and loads of like Harry Potter content has been making its way into The Sims. Not officially, but I found a sorting hat, which is custom content, which is so cool. You can actually sort the Sims into a house and all that stuff, because I know a lot of people like that, and that was like a massive discussion, which was going on in the last video. It was actually really nice to see the houses forming. Like, um, I don't know. I just saw loads of comments of the original Hogwarts build that I did of like, Hufflepuffs reunite and just stuff like that. So really nice to see the team spirit there. And of course for me, in case you're wondering, because I got a lot of comments um, last video asking what house I am I have been tested several times turns out I'm Slytherin and 
I don't know how I felt about that. I think I would be quite happy. The only thing that I feel would work against me being a Slytherin is the fact that I'm really scared of the dark. So I don't think I would ever be able to go to the common room if I was ever a part of Hogwarts and I was like an official Slytherin member. I don't think I'd be able to make it. So maybe I just have the title and I just, I don't know, go to a different common room if that's even allowed. I have no idea. But yeah, and it was really interesting because I actually made my whole family take the test. I think I mentioned this like briefly in one of the last videos that I did, but it was really weird because my husband's Slytherin, my mum's Slytherin, my dad's Slytherin, I think like maybe even my grandparents are Slytherin. It's crazy. But yeah, so I think the only odd one out was my sister and she's a Gryffindor or something. So that was pretty interesting. She would have the knowledge to be able to morph her personality into a Gryffindor without actually being a Gryffindor because she's sort of sneaky like that. Anyway, this was the first part of the inside that we were doing. Now I did leave a lot of the staircase out and that was because it was the most complicated staircase I've ever done on The Sims 4 and I tried to give the effect that the staircases could move even though they don't really have anywhere to go to <laughs> but I think it looks pretty good so I mean you could definitely use it and what I like as well is it's actually pretty complicated for The Sims to get maybe across one floor so like if you want to get across to the other side of this hallway on the ground floor you basically have to go down and then up well, it's actually not that complicated if I say it out loud. It seemed complicated when I was making it, but I thought making loads and loads of portraits here was a good idea for the Great Hall. So of course this is the Great Hall. Now a suggestion from last time and a suggestion that's been like lurking in the comments for a while is having these candles floating in just the midair. I love that so much, I really do. Cause I don't know what would make them do that. Maybe they're enchanted in some way. I don't know, there's just a magical thing about that. So I definitely wanted to include that in. Now, of course, you may notice that The Sims may not be able to sit on every single one of these seats. And the reason why I did it like this is because it wouldn't be possible anyway in The Sims 4. I mean, prove me wrong. If you want to prove me wrong, I will be so impressed. And yeah, go and send me some photos. But yeah, you, you can try it for yourself. But to get all The Sims sat down on these seats would just be a nightmare. And I thought just having them for decoration really close together would be such a cool idea. So I definitely wanted to do that. And of course, we have some glasses on the table because I felt like the table itself or the tables just look really odd without anything on them. Especially because when you see pictures of the Great Hall online and on the film, they're often sat down with like loads of cutlery there. And I just feel like it would just look odd just being a plain table. I know I did that last time, but I didn't like it for this time. Now what I was doing here is I was adding loads of different portraits to the bill, just like up and down the floor. So this area would just be the hallways of the changing staircases, just with like pictures across and stuff. There are so many, I just wanted to add so many photos, but the idea would be that I know that they repeat, but I actually found a really cool way that you can change the portraits yourself. So if you wanted to be able to recreate some of the characters of Hogwarts, I will also be recreating some myself. So if you want to use some of the sims that I've done, that would be really cool and they'll be coming up on the channel pretty soon, I think, when I get time, because honestly, I've got so many videos that I've got to do. But yeah, as soon as I get time, I'll be doing some creative sims of Hogwarts characters, the most requested ones, and I thought that would be a good idea. But the idea would be that you would take the sims and you'd be able to put the portraits of them on all the walls. Now, if you do want to do this, I would love to see what you come up with. And if you put the bill back on the Sims 4 gallery, that would be so cool. And just let me know, of course, because I love to see that sort of stuff. It's really interesting to see what other people do with my builds. And I just think that it would be really interesting to have like all the official paintings hanging up. I mean, if you're very, very good at like Photoshop and stuff, you can even Photoshop the Sims faces. I don't know, do like a little face merge. Sometimes I do that with my Sims thumbnails for Creator Sims and I really enjoy doing that. So if I do get a chance at some point, I will attempt it myself. Of course, if it is a popular request anyway, then I'll have a go. But yeah, there will be a tutorial below on how you actually do that. Because of course you can do it the standard way through the game and you can just take pictures of the Sims. But to have the amazing frames, like, I mean, the frame that we've just passed by now, like the really big gold one, or I don't know, one of the fancy brown frames that just look really old. Then there is a tutorial that I found online. It's actually made by The Sim Supply. So I'm going to link it in the description below and you can go and follow it if you want to do it because it's a really 
cool way of just I guess going that one step further and making it really feel like Hogwarts and having all the official paintings hanging up on the walls but I don't know if they'll move maybe if there's like a modder among us I don't know if there is if there is how cool would that be just to have all the moving portraits um but either way I will try and find some custom content I'll try and link it in the description after putting this build up just so everyone can enjoy it this room in here was one of the courtyards of Hogwarts, one of the middle buildings, so I thought that would be a nice idea to include that. It's just like a seating place, which is half outside. I really like the idea of having that, so I left it in. This was the staff room, so I was trying to find loads of different pictures of the official staff room, but I really couldn't find one, so I had to go with what I would imagine it to be like in the end. I mean, if you know what it looks like, that would be amazing if you could share a picture, because I really couldn't find one, I looked everywhere. But I thought that just making one up out of my imagination with the colours that I've seen in Hogwarts already, would be nice to just make it blend in, and I would just imagine a really big table here, so they'd all sit round and just talk i think there are also no electronics in the whole building so i feel like that's a nice thing as well just because that was one of the things that i didn't well i actually included last time and i wish that i didn't so i think it looks a lot better without electronics it just makes it a lot more accurate now this part here was supposed to be the entrance to dumbledore's office the idea is that directly above this is going to be his actual office room and you would have a secret password of course it won't work like that but it's still nice decoration because it would almost make it look as if you would say the secret password and you'd be able to go into his office and if you did want to delete the door then what you could do is you could have the sims stand there and then teleport upwards because you can teleport as long as you have cheats on so if you put on bb ignore gameplay and locks entitlement no bb testing cheats true that's it <laughs> i use so many cheats i actually forget sometimes so you could use that and it could be a really amazing feature so other than that i think the room that i just did there was like one of the classrooms the one, I think it's like classroom 2A, I really don't know though, because honestly I was looking for ages, but it's a classroom that is directly opposite the Quidditch pitch, and you can see it out the window. I think that's where Professor McGonagall teaches, but I'm not too sure whose classroom that belongs to, but I still thought it would be really nice to include it. Now the room that I just did there was actually Filch or Finch's room, because he has a room that's part of Hogwarts, so order to include those things because from my memory from me playing the game as a child I used to play Harry Potter the Philosopher's Stone on the PC version and I used to love it it was when I first discovered the Sims that I was really into that game and I was like playing the two and I just think it's just amazing so I hope that I'll be able to maybe go back to that game at some point maybe the graphics will be I don't know a little bit older now but I don't really mind to be honest because it's the memories that I loved and just exploring the castle but something that I really liked was the fact that Filch, or Finch, he was exploring the library as a cat, and that was like a really scary part of the game. So I just, I wanted to include a bedroom for him. So his bedroom's actually next door to the library, which I like the idea of. Now these rooms here are actually part of Hogwarts. So you can see we've got like a little plant room. We've got a portrait room as well. This is a portrait room here. And I actually deleted the middle wall, so it makes it a lot larger. If I was part of the school, I would probably be in that room a lot. By the time it was finished, I just, I really liked it. It was a room that I thought was nice and to just include portraits and stuff just in a separate room, I thought it was pretty good. So maybe these portraits would be a little bit vicious, I guess, <laughs> because if you're trapped inside a portrait, or I don't really know how it works to be honest, but if there was like a ghost inside the portrait and they were kept away from all the others, maybe there would be a good reason for that. That would be an interesting storyline if you did want to play out some Hogwarts stuff, then you could make your own storylines up and that could be an interesting room to use. Now this room in here was another classroom. I wanted to include loads of classrooms and stuff because if you are using the mod Get to School, which is a really cool mod and it's a popular one as well. If you haven't heard of it, it's basically a mod where you can go to school with the teenagers or children. You could have this as a real school and they could all sit down here at the desks. And that could be good, but of course they'd need something to do. So you could maybe replace these desks for easels or something. You could make it into that, I don't know. I didn't want to include computers though because I didn't like the idea of doing that at Hogwarts because electronics don't work. So there we go. And I just finished off by putting in some really old chairs and things. I love using the homemade stuff or the stuff that your Sims can make individually. So like the wooden 
really odd chairs and stuff. You may notice for the toilets as well, that's what I did. Just the really messy woodwork items used because I just liked it. So I think that's how the classroom finished off. Just a standard one, but I thought because it's a school, I don't want everything just to be a storage room because it wouldn't be Hogwarts. I definitely wanted to just include some random rooms like this. Then I went on to doing the girls bathroom, which was this in here. So this would be the lead on part to the Moaning Myrtle bathroom. Now I don't know if they're two separate bathrooms, I think they are, but I thought just including it to be one would be a good idea just because I didn't want the whole floor of Hogwarts, I mean the whole first floor to be just taken up by the girls bathroom. That wouldn't be a very clever idea. There would be one bathroom in there where Hermione gets cornered by that massive troll. And then this bathroom in here would be the one that Moaning Myrtle would go into. Now, this is like a shower room which I thought would be a really good idea. That's what I left it as, and I feel like it's a lot more decorative by the end, but a really amazing idea, I don't know if anyone will do this, would be putting Moaning Myrtle as a ghost inside this room and locking her in. I don't know if you can lock ghost sims in rooms, but if you can, that would be so good, and you could do some really cool stuff with that, and yeah, I mean, it, it could work. Hopefully that will happen. I mean, I would love to do that with my own game if I get time at some point, just to see how it looks. But yeah, so there was a lot of confusion when I shared this picture over Twitter, because a lot of people thought that it was the entrance to the Chamber of Secrets, which is going to be below this floor, because I didn't want to forget that. So that will be somewhere else. And then we'll have like the snake being on the lowest floor, the basilisk. I think that's his name. A really strange thing actually was the fact that I'm really interested in dinosaurs for some reason and I found that there was this massive massive gigantic dinosaur snake that existed a very very long time ago and it's so creepy because from what I saw it looked pretty much just like the snake out of Harry Potter. That's really frightening for me of course. Stuff like that. I do I get spooked but I actually enjoy looking up that sort of stuff just because it just really interests me. I don't even know why but it did. But yeah, anyway, that was the tapestry corridor there. So that was another part of Hogwarts that I did want to include. So just in case you aren't sure to what everything is, I'll try and explain it in the best way possible. But I mean, I might forget some stuff, but it will mean that I've got to sort of move across quickly throughout the rooms. A lot of the small rooms didn't take a lot of time. I won't have a lot of time to go over them, unfortunately. Now this room in here was for Professor Poppy. I think that's her name. I don't know her last name. If you know her last name, let me know in the comments below. But she is the nurse, so she actually works in the hospital. So I'm guessing that her room would have been nearer to the hospital, but I thought because I didn't really know who she was and because I didn't have space to put it anywhere else, I would put her office there. So that was a good idea. And it's got like a hospital bed and things that she would have in there. Now this room in here was a important room because it's Professor McGonagall's room. So it's also the Gryffindor head office or headquarters. I don't know. But yeah, either way, I thought that I would really make the most out of her office. So it's very inspired by her. There's loads of books everywhere. It's very cluttered. And I just thought that she's a very lovable character in the films because I haven't read the books myself, but I've watched her in the films. And I really liked her. So her office is opposite the Quidditch pitch as well. So she can see out her window. Because I remember that there was one part of the film when Harry swung past a window and she saw it, I think. I, I really can't remember. I might be making it up. But I thought that would be a nice thing to have just near the Quidditch pitch because I associate her with Quidditch a lot of time. Anyway, going on to the Ravenclaw's bedroom. These would be the dormitories for Ravenclaw. Now, I did have some complications and I will explain like just as <laughs> just before we go on to the common rooms and stuff because that caused not drama. I wouldn't say drama, but I would say that there was definitely a little bit of confusion as to why I made some rooms smaller than others. And I didn't want that to be the case. There are going to be common rooms that are going to be smaller. For instance, the Ravenclaw and the Gryffindor had quarters or the common rooms are going to be a little bit smaller than the others. The reason is because they are in the towers and because we can't make the towers very large in The Sims 4 because I didn't want to make them humongous otherwise it wouldn't have looked very good from the outside. I wanted to make these rooms a little bit smaller. That is the price they have to pay for having the common rooms in the towers but I don't think it's a big deal and I also think that having the common rooms a little bit smaller makes it look really cozy and I loved that. Now the only room that I wasn't happy with was actually this room here. So this was the Gryffindor place uh, where they sleep. I had to make bunk beds because I really didn't have enough room 
this was going to be Dumbledore's office in here because I read somewhere that Dumbledore has his office near the Gryffindor Tower or somewhere in the Gryffindor Tower. I wasn't really sure which it was, but I changed my mind and I had his being um, in a different destination. I think maybe next door, maybe on the edge of, I think when we go down the floor, you'll probably see. But yeah, so I thought that that was quite a nice way to finish off. There's not a lot of room in there and unfortunately you could probably only have like two Sims in there. But I did like the idea of bunk beds. And I feel that what I lacked with the Gryffindor bed situation, I did make it with in the common room because they have the tallest building. This is massive compared to Ravenclaw's. But to be fair, Ravenclaw's is also really nice in my opinion. I like them both. I do. I think they're really cozy and it gave me a lot of room to be able to decorate uh, with and make these spaces look very cluttered with the amount of objects that we get. So I was happy. It just turned out to be a very cluttered space. This here was Dumbledore's office. There is a little storage room right next to the office which you could use for whatever you want. I think I did leave it with a mirror being in there but there are actually two or three rooms in the build itself with the mirrors inside just because there was a really special scene in the films somewhere along the lines of Harry looking into the mirror and seeing his parents. Of course it's been ages since I've watched the film so I don't know the title of the mirror but I wanted to include loads of different rooms just for that purpose. So Dumbledore's office was not very big and because it was hidden I didn't have a lot of space at all. I didn't want it to be like a massive part of the build. It's large compared to the other offices of the other teachers. I liked it. I did. I thought it was pretty good. Anyway, going on to the kitchen. So we're now down on the basement floor. This room is directly underneath the massive grand hall, grand entrance area with the chairs where they would all sit and eat. This room here was very inspired by like loads and loads of different pictures I saw and I just thought the tables in the middle were the best that I could get them. Of course we do have some rocks leaking through but that was just because from the outside of the build it would have been so difficult to get rid of them. It probably would have left me with not a very good exterior of the build without that many rocks and I really like them leaking through as well. I think it just gives something to the basement floor, it makes it feel like it really is in the basement so I was happy with that. Some interesting rooms as well. You might notice there's some like secret rooms around here. I did also leave a lot of these smaller rooms a little bit undecorated as we go down to the basement floors because when I did play the Harry Potter game as a child, I did notice that there were a lot of empty rooms there. So that wasn't me just deciding not to do it or just trying to rush through. That was me trying to take a step back and appreciate that some rooms would be maybe a little bit less cluttered than others and I like that idea. Now this here is the Hufflepuff entrance. I wanted to do something very fancy and have it as if it, it looks as if it's like corked almost. There is a lady protecting it as well because there is a lady protecting the Hufflepuff common room and I thought that was a nice idea. I think they had a pretty good deal. This is a massive, massive room to be honest, but I just, I really like the idea of putting the kegs like that because I noticed that there were these like round wooden keg like things in the walls around the room. So I definitely wanted to include details like that in. And I think apart from that, there are just loads of portraits of food and things just around just because I wanted to include that sort of stuff. These are the bedrooms in here. If you did want to access this particular corridor with the common room and the bedrooms and everything, you would have to remove that cork, which the lady is above and yeah, then the Sims would be able to get through. The idea of this was just having it like really cluttered, trying to merge those kegs in with the rocks to make it not look too out of place. I like the way that it finished off. Anyway, this was the hospital down here. So the hospital should be maybe one floor above this and slightly to the left, but I had to just make do. I thought that this was a really good spot to put it in and I liked it. I used a lot of the get to work stuff. So if you don't have the get to work expansion pack, then it may not look like this in your game. It might look pretty empty without it because a lot of this stuff is from there. So a lot of the hospital beds and things, but to get that real hospital effect, that's what I wanted to go for. I'd imagine that this room would be quite well used, especially because I would associate Hogwarts with 
being a dangerous place, <laughs> especially with all those staircases and the Quidditch pitch and just everything, like especially when you involve broomsticks, that would be a real disaster. And I would just imagine that this room would be heavily used. So I thought having it in a massive space like this would be a good idea. And just putting in some curtains there, just in case that people wanted a little bit of privacy at night, that would be quite a nice thing to do. Anyway, this was a storage cabinet down here. There was like a room just with a mirror in and a little light on the floor. That could be whatever you want it to be. It really, really could. But anyway, going down to the basement floor, which is this one here, we have the entry to the Chamber of Secrets, um, which is like, I guess it's one of those really heavy metal doors. It's got snakes on and things, or at least that's how I remember it. But I just, I couldn't find anything that was even similar to that. So I just ended up going with one of those enlarged Sims 4 get together <laughs> science banners, which looks a little bit like a snake, I guess. So this was a snake here. And for that, I used a enlarged lizard. If you're wondering how I enlarge things, I'll try and leave it below. I do mention it in a lot of my videos though. So yeah, I mean, you may know how to enlarge things, but it's really easy to find online. You can just enlarge objects. That's what I did. That was finished off and I think for now I was just on to the potions room so this was another room that was I don't think it was Snape's room because I think there's actually two potion rooms downstairs there's like classroom I guess it's like 5g I really can't remember <laughs> there are so many different numbers but no I really tried to follow it as accurately as possible so there are two rooms here downstairs for teaching this is Snape's office in here. His office is actually a lot smaller than I thought it would be, but I think it's quite nice. It's quite cozy and it's got a lot of stuff in by the end, but had a lot of fun just changing the light colors so you can actually see that I'm on um, the day mode now. I'm on live mode and I was with the families just for a brief second there. I use the same family each time and it's so bad because I should look after their needs and I unfortunately forget to just because I'm so busy building and then when I go back on I just fast forward time it's an absolute nightmare. Anyway though dungeon areas were important to me just because I associate the dungeon areas to be like a prison so I definitely wanted some prison bars there which I, I would say was pretty good but yeah that's the reason why I would be scared of coming down here if I was a true Slytherin member and I had to meet people down here no I wouldn't I actually wouldn't just because I'd be so frightened of like how dark it is and the dungeons and that massive snake no absolutely no I don't even know if the Slytherin members are aware of the fact that all this creepy stuff happens in the dungeons maybe they are i have no idea i mean maybe some of the people are just are just completely oblivious to what goes on but for me no i would not even the sound effects like even if i heard some really crazy roar i would just not even go near that room but i was finishing off the room and the slytherin room the common room ends up being quite a large one and that is just because i had a lot of room down here as well similar to the hufflepuff situation just with the amount of room i had i was also able to get a very accurate or well as accurate as i could the layout of the Slytherin common room. So it's like a really odd shape, but I tried to copy it in the best way possible. So you may have noticed, but that's the reason why it's in like a really odd shape there, just because I tried to make it what it is. So yeah, it's got like a few things that, I think it's the only common room with like hobby things in that the Sims can do which is kind of sad and I probably should have included more of those in the rooms and I would have done if I had more room but maybe in the future if there's ever a Hogwarts <laughs> version 3 then we can do that but there we go anyway this room in here is a room that isn't spoken about a lot I don't think I haven't actually seen a lot about this room a lot of information online was just like speculation and stuff but this would be the room where the ghosts would come and they would party and stuff so I put like graves in here and I also put these black curtains just to black out the room a bit and make it look a little bit creepier I was also a real fan of these curtains because I used them in the hospital and I just I couldn't get them out of my head after that I was thinking they look really good though it doesn't have a lot of light and a lot of the lights are actually just like the graves on the floor which is very very creepy but it does look like a ghost party room in my opinion that's what I would imagine to be the closest that I could have got it like Anyway, this is one of the last classrooms that I did. So I think this is also one of the last rooms that I did, which is crazy because I don't know, it just, it doesn't even feel like I've done that many. 
Um, but no, I had a lot of fun doing this one and loads and loads of chairs, like just loads of clutter in the room. This was like the dark arts classroom. So there's like a potions room and there's a dark arts room. And uh, this is the biggest one. This is actually the biggest classroom in the whole of the build. This would be like, I guess the most used room if you were using Hogwarts as an actual school with the get to school mod. And yeah, you, you could make some really fun storylines up in here. You could have maybe some activities that the pupils could do. And I don't even know what they would do at the table. Maybe they would read some stuff. But yeah, loads and loads of books, loads of just storage items, just cause it's the basement and I wanted it to be messy and cluttered. I also included these feathers because I remember in a certain part of the movie there was a place when they were trying to make the feathers levitate and I thought that I would include them into this room. So along with like loads of potions and books and the feather, like that was pretty much what the desk consisted of. Just clutter and that's what I did in here. It was quite playable as well, like you could definitely have loads of sims in here, no problem, and you could do loads of things with it. I also used the bar decorations from the Sims 4 get together, so they came in pretty handy and I think it looks a little bit like a potion room after doing that. Then I just changed the light colour and I was pretty much done there. I think that the last thing that I did was include a really creepy ghost gnome downstairs. So I don't know if that would be like my take on peeves or something. I have no idea. Anyway though, that is the end of the build. So I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see all future videos. Thank you so much for watching. I'd love to know what you think in the comments below and I will speak to you all soon.